Good morning and welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Well, yes, it is Christmas, but all through the year, we need to make certain that we take the best care of our kids. And it's a pleasure to introduce to you our brand new segment from Just Kids Emergency All-in-One Solution Shop for Pediatric Care. And this morning, Dr. Paula Robertson, a consultant, Pediatric Emergency Director of just Kids Emergency joins us as we talk safety for the kids this Christmas. Mm, thank you for having me. Good morning and welcome back. Thank Officially, you. Thank you. We are making certain that we have this conversation because we know with Christmas, as much as we were talking about our tree, for example, there are many hazards that we have to be mindful of with the kids. Some of what you actually brought on set this morning. I with did. With the exception of the bando. <laughs> right? Well, that was just for festivities. <laughs> <laughs> but getting immediately into the conversation, isn't that in your experience you see many persons, parents, kids, you know, guardians mm -hmm. coming in with emergency specifically around the Christmas yeah. time. And it's not just as internationally we know this time of year there tends to be an increase in pediatric emergency room attendances mm -hmm. for lots of different reasons. So yeah I just wanted to highlight some of the hazards that can happen at this time of year to make sure that we have a safe and enjoyable Christmas. Sounds good. Jumping straight into it, then mm -hmm. we start at home I imagine yes. because the house has a lot of hazards normally but with Christmas I've Bigger, there are a few additional ones. Absolutely. So you were asking about my bottle mm -hmm. of water. The thing is that in Trinidad, we love to decant things into unnamed and unlabeled bottles. So this yeah. is probably one of our top hazards that we see in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Decorating, painting, you name it. And then what tends to happen is that we'll tip the paint thinner or the excess chemicals, bleach, I've seen white rum, <laughs> all sorts of things put into an unlabeled bottle. Mm. And so to the average kid, it just looks like something to drink. Right. And so the first thing I'd say is be really careful. Don't decant chemicals out of their containers into unlabeled bottles and watch how you store them safely. Right. right? Because we want to avoid poisonings for that reason. Definitely mm. want to know it. Sure. To be quite true, I didn't actually think of that. It's easier uh -huh. to store the smaller bottles, but you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. It looks like something to drink for It a does, bit. right? Yeah. God forbid we should bypass that point. So we already have the situation where the ch child rather has ingested something like mm -hmm. that. What sorts of next steps can we take, if any at all? So I would always say uh, it really depends on what it is. And so if you're not sure what to do, uh, definitely give us a call at Just Kids or your, speak to your child's doctor. Or if you really are worried, just come straight to hospital. Okay. Um, depending on what the chemical is, our intervention may differ. Right. So we would generally say safe to um, remove clothing that has the chemical on it. Mm -hmm. Try not to induce vomiting mm -hmm. because sometimes that makes it even worse. If, for instance, kerosene, for instance, if that's ingested and we vomit, what tends to happen is some of it gets inhaled. And so you want to avoid that irritation to your lungs because then it gets even more of a concern. So Oof. just really come and ask come for on help. Come on yeah. to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Now, I have some little friends on set. They do. <laughs> My little army men. <laughs> We've been decorating the set. Yes. Yeah, I've had a good time yeah. with that, actually. Oh, yeah, good. And I can imagine that that is probably a very common hazard yeah. as well. Yeah, so, so really I brought these as a reminder to think about toys. Mm -hmm. And you really want to make sure that the toys are age appropriate and um, safe. So they meet international safety guidance. Um, a special mention to kids who are, um, for instance, neurodiverse. So, for example, kids who are on this autistic spectrum mm -hmm. who may look older, but in terms of their sensory needs, the types of toys that suit them may differ. So maybe toys that aren't loud or they would have lots of removable parts. So always worth maybe speaking to those parents about what kinds of toys their kids might enjoy. Um, but for the younger children, you want to avoid toys with easily removable parts, mm -hmm. toys that can be swallowed. So these little guys, for example, can, believe it or not, be swallowed. Um, and so you want to make sure that they are kept uh, in a safe place. And if you've got older children, that perhaps that they remember to pack away small bits of Lego and toys, etc., that can be removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. tips that we can all use. Yeah. I particularly like the con consideration for persons on the spectrum because mm -hmm. that in itself could be an entire show Absolutely. for discussion, but definitely something that we are piquing your interest on this morning. We've got other items on the table, oh. including Crazy Christmas Lady's favorite item, lights. <laughs> yes. These are strung along, though, and usually wrapped on the tree or on a garland. 
how dangerous are so we don't worry i'm not taking away your lights you can definitely <laughs> have your lights it's more as a reminder just to be a little bit careful about a few things the mm -hmm. first is how many lights you have strung together because we normally advocate for not stringing together more than three strands of lights Gosh. and plug <laughs> <laughs> and plugging those in because that's a, that's a fire hazard. Right. Um, the other is to make sure that the lights that you're using, outdoors or indoors, are, um, are safe for that use. For example, these right. are lights that can be used outdoors, but sometimes you might find people use the wrong sets of lights that are right. outside. And the other is that we all know this from Christmas trees many years ago, that there's always lots of strands all over the place. So you want to make sure that that's tucked out of each right. uh, so it's not a tripping hazard and try to avoid avoid running them under carpets or rugs where, for example, that can cause um, a fire hazard as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk decorations, I know that you are a self-proclaimed crazy Christmas lady. <laughs> but what are your go-to items that you found are easy to make big impact, mm -hmm. but at the same time safe regardless of the age of kids? Yeah, absolutely. So again, this depends a little bit on your developmental age of children. So younger children tend to go through a stage where they love to put things into their mouths. Okay. And that's part of how they explore. So you want to make sure that your decorations don't have bits that can come loose, for example. So let's look at, for example, at our Christmas ball here, mm -hmm. um, which I love, but the tops of the ball can easily come off as I try, hopefully to get it off. But what tends to happen is that kids can then swallow this piece. Right. So you want to make sure that there are no loose bits, that there's not parts that can come off. The other thing is that Christmas trees look like they're literally magnets for kids. And so you want to make sure as well that there's not bits that are um, unsafe. So the glass decorations, decorations that can break, mm -hmm. uh, check to see that icicles, lighting, etc., uh, don't contain lead. Yeah. And so for the first few years, I brought this along because, in fact, what I did with my son when he was little was we made lots of homemade felt decorations. So Super I've kept soft. this. Yeah, I've kept this as a, as a memento. We still put it on our tree. So little ones, for example, alternatives might be to do felt based trees right. or trees with soft felt decorations that don't have bits that you can pull off. It sounds great. And in that case, you're getting to actually create memories. Mm. You're doing things with the child included. It sounds perfect. But it does sound like it might be a little bit on the downside for the decorations. Oh, just know for a few years. Okay. You may not have to go with your color coordinated tree. It may well be that it's just a softer, safer version. That sounds smart. <laughs> Christmas, though, in Trinidad is a lot of cooking as well. Yes. We have to head out of the other spaces with the decoration mm -hmm. into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Let's talk safely there. Right. What are some of the major pitfalls that we're guilty of without even thinking? I know. And, you know, we love our food. And together with food comes drinking and alcohol. So one of the first things I'd say is to watch how you put down your glasses of your alcohol mm -hmm. and your alcoholic beverages. Once they're at ground level, that's, that's fair game for kids that are on the floor Everybody. and exploring. But the other thing is when we're cooking and prepping, you want to make sure that the kitchen is a safe zone. So it may well be that we have to put in a stair gate, for example, or a baby gate to pre protect kids from coming in. Right. If that's not possible, just watch the stove in particular. Use the back burners rather than the fronts so that kids can't pull things down easily and one habit I've trained myself to do over the years is turn the handles of pots of to face the back of the stove so yeah. that it's not a, a pulling hazard. Mm. I'm nodding here because I'm clumsy. I don't even have kids. <laughs> so I have to think of those things. But the back burner usage yes. is actually a really cool tip that we yeah. don't necessarily yeah, think yeah, of. Yeah. No, we get a lot of burns and scalds. And the other thing is just be careful with hot drinks. So always make sure that hot tea and beverages, try to avoid carrying them over the heads of kids. And always keep them at least six inches away from the, um, the edges mm -hmm. of countertops and tables. Right. Yeah. Pushing everything in, using back burners, turning handles mm -hmm. away from us. All right, so with the cooking, we're good. Let's talk about actual preparation mm -hmm. itself, even before we get to the stove. That's a major one. But how many accidents do we see? As much as our parents tell us not to run with knives or scissors, are those things very much uh, elevated during the Christmas season at all? Yeah, I think it's just because Christmas is a time where there's lots of activities going mm -hmm. on at the same time. We know what it's like. There's, there's lots of craziness happening in terms of um, just family members and so the level of supervision for kids sometimes does go a little bit um, on the wayside so it's just keeping eyes on kids and remembering that they still need to be supervised so you want to make sure that you're not running around with obvious hazards like sharp knives for example 
and that you are making sure that they can also enjoy family time without necessarily getting themselves into difficult situations. So visiting relatives, make sure they store medication, cleaning materials, etc., up and out of reach. That right. one's perfect. Yeah. A lot of these times when we have persons coming over, we're just thinking about the fact that they're here. Mm -hmm. We're all enjoying each other's company. But storing their medication, things in their handbags, other hazards that yes. might not be usually present in yeah. the house are certainly things we need to be mindful of. So that covers the kitchen, mm -hmm. the decor, mm -hmm. in terms of safe entertaining overall. Anything yeah. you want to share with us Oh, there? yeah. So just a couple more things. So one is um, I've got my set of flower which I love but it's more prompt to say just be careful with certain plants so we mm -hmm. all love our poinsettias mm -hmm. but some plants are toxic really? so plants that have a milky sap like the poinsettia for instance if ingested or put into eyes can actually be quite harmful so I didn't know that mm. in terms of the milky sap much less the well poisonous part yeah. of it yeah. yeah so again in the case of those things actually being ingested accidentally what are the next steps so definitely try not to induce vomiting call us if you if you're worried or concerned but the safer thing for us is actually just prevent prevention in the first case so of actually course. it's not that you can't have them you want to make sure they're up and out of reach and not within grabbing distance of kids mm -hmm. right? they're so pretty they're gonna definitely know, grab that no, one no, it's one of i have a question though because i'm thinking is it a myth is it actually working we would see people or hear parents tell you drink milk if these things are ingested right. does that help at all so that's why we'd say call us and or speak to your doctor because for some things it can right um but for others it's actually not recommended that you do that so it really depends on what exactly has been ingested right all else fails head to the pediatric yeah right. just give us a ring yeah all right so we've talked about the kitchen we've talked about the tree we've even talked about the guests being in the house mm -hmm. the physical space around anything else you want to cover now right so i've brought my last little item here which is my one of my altar favorites so things like these right the the, the old um necklaces mm -hmm. and the singing cards mm -hmm. for example um, the musical cards, they're all parts of what are uh, important about the season, but one hazard with these is actually their batteries. So you want to be careful with the button batteries that are often within these. Right. Um, some may also contain magnets as well. So I've taken out a tiny button battery from one earlier. I don't know if they'll be able to see this on the tip on of my tip finger. Of your finger. Yeah. So this is one of the smaller ones, but batteries can look bigger than this as well. Right. And the issue with button batteries are that they're tiny. Obviously, they're easy to swallow, but they will still emit a charge. And so what tends to happen is that when they are swallowed, especially if they meet saliva, is that it will continue to erode. And so this is actually an emergency. If it does happen and you think your child has swallowed a button battery, please bring them to us or to the emergency room because we will need to, to look at removing them, actually. Usually we'd have to kind of go in and remove it as soon as possible because if it's left to remain, it will potentially erode straight through tissues that it hits. So this one's a real hazard. And so for sure, you want to make sure that you're keeping these out of their reach. You still have fun, but just make sure that they're not, they're not within reach because some kids are very good at opening things. Mm -hmm. And if they're left around, that's easy game. The In that case, we are making sure that every instant that we've talked about today, they know the location to head to. Number 10 Broom Street in St. Clair is where you're going to find Dr. Paula Robertson and the rest of the crew. But they are going to be joining us every Wednesday to make sure that we can help you keep your kids safe. This has been the inaugural Just Kids Emergency All-in-One Solution Shop segment here on the Now Morning Show where we talk kids safety this Christmas. We'll continue the conversation to help you keep those kids safe and we say thank you very much to the doctor Thanks. for joining us this morning but you want to stick around. We've got even more good information for you here on the Now Morning Show. We'll be back.